70% win rate in 77 games is absolutely ridiculous. Miracle has secretly been spamming the new hero Murta with an insane win rate in 9k plus average games. According to my sources and research, this is Miracle. But regardless of whoever this is, the win rate is absurd and this video can help you guys learn something new. I've seen many of his games and his early build literally never changes. He always goes for the magic wand build which is magic wand plus 3 branches. Sometimes he goes for magic wand plus 1 branch and a set of tangos. This is usually when he loses gold in the picking phase and can't buy triple branches. The possible reasoning behind this is that Murta is an intelligence hero, meaning that a rate band doesn't benefit her as much as it would benefit an agility hero. Null talismans are really bad in the current meta as it doesn't offer anything more than the 5 damage you get from it on intelligence heroes. A better alternative is to rush your power thread straight after the early build and buy the robe of the magi, which gives you plus 6 intelligence which means plus 6 damage for intelligence heroes. Magic wand gives you plus 3 attributes and the 3 extra branches also gives, give you plus 3 attributes. Meaning that you get the same damage benefits you would get from buying Null Talisman components. So overall, this build is the best of both worlds. Moving forward, here you can see that his team is fighting for the bounty runes. Instead of just AFKing in his lane, he goes and helps his team. Notice how because he showed up, his team is suddenly winning this fight. If he didn't show up, this would probably be a 4 versus 4 and there's a good chance his team will lose. Not only do they win the fight and he gets a kill and two assets, they also get three bounties because of that. So overall, this was a really decent move for him, from him. Moving on to the laning phase. Here you can see that the creeps are aggroed. I would expect him to use his Q to secure this creep, which he does. So this is like a good tip in regards to how you want to lane if you have a hero that has spells to secure a range creep. Heroes such as Luna has her Lucent Beam, Swen has his stun. You can use these spells to secure the range creep. Here you can also see that these two are trading and he's trying to help his support, which is really nice. Something that you can practice in your games. And now he just like denies this creep. So notice how against Rubik, it's like very weird that against Rubik, you can just like deny like that. The thing is that Rubik uses lift on the fight at the bottom lane, which is why this guy knows that there's no Rubik Faith Bolt to secure this range creep. So he just like puts the miller creep onto the range creep, zones him out, and then just like denies it. And after that, what you see here is that after this wave dies, like right now, what he does is that he doesn't drag that wave inside the tower. This is because if he drags these creeps inside the tower, then the tower will just kill it and these four creeps will then push into the broodmother who is not dragging the creeps inside it. Notice how because he keeps the wave here and then keeps his static here, even though he has, he has no option to deny these two creeps, what happens is that his creep wave stays here rather than if he put the wave inside his tower, the creep would, would be here somewhere, which would be really bad for him. Here, I want you to notice another thing, which is that you see him use his Q on the range creep, that, which means that he got the creep, right? And now he has four creeps and the enemy has three creeps. So what he should do right now is he should aggro the melee creeps onto his range creep, which he does. The reason behind doing this is that if he doesn't do that, his wave will push into the enemy tower. Why? Because he has more number of creeps than the enemy do. Whenever you have more number of creeps than the enemy does, it indicates that your wave is going to push into them, which is not ideal as creep equilibrium. You want, you always want your wave to be here rather than here. There's like basic reasoning for that. The way, the closer your, the wave is to your tower, the more safe you are. So for example, if the wave, if your wave is like here near the enemy tower, you can't really harass them. And if they go on you, you have to run all the way back here. And similarly, if the wave is near here, you can just like run back to your tower. Or if you go on them, they have to go all the way back here. So this is why he aggros the melee creeps onto his range creep. Because range creep is a creep that is like completely uncontested when two waves meet, right? Because they just like keep hitting from behind and no one does anything about it. But if you aggro their melee creeps onto your range creep, your range creep will suddenly die. And then it will be like three versus three. Like, this doesn't work as he keeps aggroing because he has to move back because he was getting harassed. But the idea is, like, the same. Moving on. Notice how he doesn't use his Q to secure this creep. Why doesn't he do that? Let's just go back and review this again. So here, uh, the brood aggros these creeps onto the range creep, but Murta doesn't use his Q to uh, secure it. So there's, like, two reasons behind this. One is that if you look at the movements of the brood again, he aggroes the creeps onto the range creep 
and then as soon as the range creep is like below hp here aggro's the creeps again away from it making it so that if murta uses his q he will like mistime it and then this creep will be left at like one hit and then brute could deny it miracle saw this beforehand and did not use it so this way it doesn't get denied another thing is that rubik and brute like if he has to like secure it with his uh, auto attack rubik and Bru brute can do a lot of damage to him so now he has to just like basically give it to them because he can't do anything because he's out of position moving on so there's like a wave here uh brute aggro's the waves onto his range creep again notice how he doesn't use his q to secure that creep meaning that he wants to save it for something else so let's see what actually happens so here uh cm goes on the brute they use all of their spells on him and brute loses a lot of hp so this is like another thing like the reason why cm is good with murta is that it ba she basically set up for her fear right which is really nice and the other thing to notice here is that they coordinate their spells and now brute has like way low hp another thing is that radiant has another wave coming which means that there's going to be seven creeps heading into the Brute's tower and Brute is like super low. So they have forced Brute into a really bad position because they can either dive him under tower or like deny every creep. So since Brute has really low HP, this will basically allow Miracle to, instead of, in most cases, you just like go back when this happens because you feel like they might jump you and kill you because you're super far away, but not in this case. The reason behind that is that if you see Rubik and Brute, these two heroes really don't have that much enough burst damage to basically kill you in time, right? So because of this scenario, Murta is allowed to stand in near the tier 1 of the enemy and deny as many creeps as she wants. Uh, given that she doesn't really go out of position, which she won't because she's a good player. But let's say if this, there's like a primal beast inside of this brute then they could pr obviously like punish this guy and then he would just go somewhere back but notice how he just like stays here denies a bunch of creeps or at least tries to because he basically is pressuring enemy team and you see like how he's changing his position notice how he denied every creep but he didn't go for the range creep the reason behind that is that if he's like super close to deny the range creep rubik can lift him inside the tower and then brute can slow with her single bola and then they could potentially kill this guy but he doesn't do that and now rubik is like oh i, I didn't get that opportunity he lifts uh Murta into here and then it actually turns out to be a bad thing for them as rubik lost all of his mana and now he's also being pressured so this keeps happening this is like a really good example of when to pressure the enemy and when to just like go back and afk the thing about these players is that they never leave any creep uncontested. It's like insane. Like they always fight for every creep. Like you see how Brood only came for like one creep and then they both go on him. And I don't know, maybe this Brood dies. There's a good possibility if there's like a lot of spells. Yeah, I think this Brood is dead. So imagine you walk up for a creep for like one second and then the enemy players just like punish you instantly for this. This is why like there's like a huge difference between like rank 50 11 key players and like a 6k 7 key player it's like it's massive moving on to when he leaves the lane so this is like a lane which is like very weird in a sense that if you think about it this is a lane where it's like a decent matchup for Murta, but she doesn't really have that good of a wave clear ability like when you're playing against brood her spiderlings are like really annoying so as soon as brood hits six there's a good chance that if you stay in the lane you might end up feeding so you just have to leave the lane or someone in your team has to go and gank her. But the condition that we're in right now is that CM's TPing towards bot, like she's already bot. It's like a visual bug. So CM's bot, and these guys obviously don't want to leave this lane because they're pressuring bot lane because AM's dead. They want the bot tower. So the best thing that uh, Miracle can do right now is like leave the lane if Brood is six. I think she is six. And so otherwise, he, he will just like end up feeding. So Husker's not going to TP top because he's like not good against brood anyway he doesn't have any wave clear so there's like there's no counter play to this rather than just like avoid feeding and then um leave the lane so let's see this is what happens after that so he just like stays here brood hasn't showed that she's six so she now shows that she's six miracle loses a lot of hp he uses his ult which lets him stay alive for a bit because of uh, the physical damage thingy where you can't get attacked but holy shit they're like diving way too deep for this and he ends up dying and now notice how he just like looks at his teammates like wait, why is no one tp'ing but like, he needs to understand that cm doesn't have a tp and husker just like doesn't tp he's just not he's like a very greedy hero so this is like a good example of when to leave the lane like whenever you feel like yeah i can't really stay in this lane 
then it's the best chance to just like leave without feeding okay so moving on to the next thing so notice how he like tps here rather than walking here right so i want you to look at a few things i want you to go back a bit so he's like standing here in base looking at where he can possibly go to farm so he can't go to top lane because if he tp stop he's just gonna feed again which is going to ruin his game and the other thing is that his primal beast just bought back um and he's farming bot because he's very tilted so this is he can't really tp bot and like try to take farm from him because he's already tilted and it's like not the best move he wants his primal beast to recover and then on mid lane there's like husker so he has absolutely nowhere to farm because he can't go near this point because he will just die to the brute he can't farm ancients because it's like really weak so the best thing he can do is that he can just like walk here and like farm whatever he can here until there's like a big opening where he can go but instead of walking what he does is that he tps so now the reason behind him tping like this is because if you look at the timer it's close to the stack timer so if he tps right now he can potentially stack or like twice uh, can farm this camp twice so if he walks here then he possibly misses out on this timing and can't farm as well as that after this point he just like keeps farming 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 can't really go top uh, goes anywhere beyond this point brood is going to kill him so he's just like very sad right now there's like literally no space on the map this guy's farming ancients bottom is like a disaster if he goes here he dies if he goes top he dies so he basically has zero space on the map so he just like look, looks for the nearest spot so he goes mid and like wants to deep push this because that's all he's going to get that's like 70 like 150 gold that's all he's getting so after this point he sees brood and vision they have literally zero space on the map so what they do here is that they use moonlight shadow and then they set up a kill on brood mother i hope yeah brood mother dies and i want you to notice one thing he literally does not care if there's a fight going on here he doesn't give a shit he's like i'm out i'm out of here so the reason behind this is that since brood died this entire top area is free for takes right he can go top and like push in a wave and then move his way backwards right and then farm this, these jungle camps he got like 20 seconds of a breathing time and he's just like utilizing it instantly so he goes top farms this and he's just like keep farming until the brood is going to be alive and have spiders again then he has to go back again because brood is like so brood shows top and then he's like scared again but notice how one move opened up some of the map for them so now another thing to see here is that he's farming but his teammates tp both his supports tp top and they smoke with him so the reason why they're smoking is because they just saw this brute tp top and if they manage to kill him again that means that top ear is completely under their control and then murta can farm somewhat so they go on the brood here uh they end up killing her hopefully yes yeah, brood dies and now murta can just like safely farm this area he can stay here right so these two moves pushing brood out of the top lane or killing her really helps murta farm this is how like dora basically works like if you have zero space on the map rather than griefing your teammates by taking their farm by like going into triangle and farming uh triangle jungle creeps with husker or like ruining the primal beast's game he's tr he's making moves to make space for himself he's c shot calling his supports that we should smoke and kill this brood and make get him out of the map so he's just like chilling here farming here which is really nice to see like this is really high level plays and then brood tp's in again and they catch him again there's no way he dies again right so they're chasing him yeah he's like fine unless oh that wow that was really good that was really good so they end up killing brood thrice which is like literally game changing and now brood has like lit brood's game is like completely ruined and you see that murta is going back and like gaining more in farm this one kill is is gonna allow him to like farm a lot of the map so let's see what he does now so there's like no camps available top lane brood is back so he can't really go because his team is making a move at bottom lane so he waits for the wave to push in then pushes this in what will he do after that so there's like a few choices uh he could either go towards top and farm this or he can farm triangle but husker is already there so he doesn't want to take his farm because her husker also needs bkb before before he can do anything and his team is setting up something at bot lane so he can't go there so this is like the only spot where he can go if he goes mid he might die so he goes here he farms this camp and then he scans this and oh scan reveals something because someone showed in the so he's like oh i can't go beyond this point i can't go mid because there's a good chance i can die because the scan proof so what does he do he can't even farm triangle so what he does is that he tps towards bot because they saw od on the map so now 
This is like the only move he can make on the map, right? Like if he goes mid, there's a good chance he can die. If he goes top, there's like brood he can die. He can't farm there. Instead of wasting his time, there was like no camps in their triangle. Instead of wasting his time, he just goes bot. He goes bots and like fight with his team. So if they win this fight, they can open up this tower for him. And now they take this tower. They end up taking this tower and now boom, the map is like completely opened up for him. Now he can like... Because they took this tower, they have control of this area. Now he can just like implement the triangle farming pattern after this point. Now you will see he's just like uh, pushing in the wave. The, the triangle farming pattern is basically you farm these two camps and the triangle and push in waves every single minute. Like you have to do this religiously every single minute and your network will like shoot up. So he has like 30 seconds. Um, he stays here. They're trying to make a move because I think CM called for it. I'm not sure whether this works. Okay, so it does work because the enemy doesn't react to it. But yeah, it's overall a decent play. They end up killing someone. And let's see how he like plays on the map now. You see like how he has so much space suddenly. He's like farming a lot. Farm this camp, farm this camp. Then he moves. Instead of going here, he moves towards the ancient tree. Why? Because he wants to farm ancients every single minute. So this Husker is kind of griefing him. Have you, you noticed the difference between this player and the Husker, right? He didn't sacrifice the Husker's farm for his own early game. Because he wants the Husker to have impact. So even though Husker has BKB and Murta does not, this Husker is still trying to take farm from the Murta. So the rank difference really shows, right? This guy's 300 rank and this guy's like 64 rank. So skill difference is like very visible, how you want to adjust your team. So he just like stands there. And I just want you to notice how religiously he keeps farming Ancient Sweep every single minute. One of the most important things as a carry is farming patterns. Let's just look at how he adopts the farming pattern. So he's farming the triangle right now at the start of the minute. And where does he go after that? Usually you just go towards the bottom area, you farm these two camps and then push in these waves. But let's see what he does here. So he farms this, takes a bit of time, and then he goes towards the mid wave rather than going bot. So he pushes in the mid wave, which means that he prioritizes pushing waves a lot. Then he just goes back towards the bottom area. He stacks this camp and then pushes this out. This is actually pretty nice. Uh, he pushed in the wave wave, stacked the camp as well, and then pushed in like a double wave. And then he goes further for another wave because he has like 40 seconds. He has like kind of like 40 seconds before he can hit this, right? Like he has a lot of window before he has to go back. So during this time, he's just farming whatever he can. So when it comes to farming patterns, the way you want to move to your end destination is by farming right so if you want to move towards the ancients and you have like a lot of time depending on the time you have let's say if you have only 10 seconds then you should like instantly move right now right from this point to here it will take you 10 seconds but let's say you have like 45 or 40 seconds you can like farm this camp you can like farm this camp you can farm this camp and then move here reliably like you can farm a lot of a lot of gold before that so this is why he like went to push another wave rather than going back it's not related to husker farming the jungle triangle but it's like so the enemy goes on him here because he tried to help his teammates and since he doesn't have bkb he's just gonna end up dying this is like the weakness of murta he's like a very fragile hero against magical damage against physical damage she's like pretty good but phys magical damage she's like whatever so his team does end up punishing the enemy and trading well for it but overall it's like not good for her so he got his BKB and now his Oscar has BKB, now he has BKB and now his offlaner Primal Beast has BKB. So instead of like farming or anything, just they're just like, they know that the enemy is like, the late game of the enemy is like really strong. AIM is like super strong late game against all of their heroes. And OD is also super good late game. So they have to end this game super fast because their heroes are like on a timer. So when they get the advantage that they have BKBs and the enemy is like not really. As they're like magical heroes if you see them. There's like only BKB on OD who really can't do anything with it. And teammates doesn't want to show up in fines because he doesn't even have Manta. So they're utilizing this timer forcing the enemy to fight them. Rather than running around trying to look for kills, they're going from objective to objective. Before we move further, I want you to notice his skill build. Even though he is level 15, he still doesn't have 4 points in both his Q and W. Notice how instead of maxing his Q and W, he put the points in his stats. As a carry, Murta doesn't exactly use that many spells and just right clicks people down, so having more stats alters her ability to right click better. He goes for this build almost every game and only puts 4 points in his Q if he has to stay in lane for a bit longer. 
If he has to leave, then he doesn't max his Q. Instead, put points in his E that allows him to fast farm the jungle. As for his talent 3, he goes for all the stat damage talent that helps him in his ability to right click better. Now coming to his item build. His item build has two variations. He goes for Treads, Millstorm, Dragonlance, BKB, Silver Edge, and then Mjolnir almost every game. The games where he is super far ahead, he goes for Treads, Millstorm, Dragonlance, and then Mjolnir, followed by BKB and Silver Edge. His build doesn't deviate more than this. I'll explain why he buys these items. The Treads help him in farming as it provides him with attack speed and damage. Millstorm is also his farming fighting item but mainly for farming as it procs with her E and lets him clear camps faster. Since this hero has a decent base attack range, in order for her to reliably right click with her ult without being kited, additional attack range from the Dragonlance helps with that. BKB is a pretty self-explanatory item. You don't want to get bursted down during your ult or stunned while you're in your ult and then Silver Edge is your damage slash mobility item. Anything after that is luxury depending upon the game. So they push in this tower, the tower's dead. The enemy cannot respond because they have three BKBs. How do you fight into that? So now instead of running around trying to chase this anti mage who can like blink around or like other heroes, they're just like going to Roche. The reason why they're just going to Roche is because if the enemy doesn't want them doesn't want to give Roche to them, they will like try to fight here. And if they try to fight here, they will lose. So instead of like wasting their time running around, they're forcing the enemy to come towards them or give them the objective this is like a win-win situation for them so they go here as soon as they move here the enemy shows up because they don't want them to go rush and you will see what happens there Jakiro's is dead Odi is also dead so now two heroes are dead which means that they just get rush for free anyway but instead they get two extra kills so here they go for rush which is really nice and now they just got rush which is cool right so even though they got rush Technically, what pe players do is that as soon as they get Roche, they just like run around. Oh, oh, we want to like end the game. We want to go take this tower. We want to go take this tower, right? We want to take towers individually and do stuff. But what you will see here is like he's just, he's just like going back. Because in high average games, good players don't like to um, avoid using resources on the map. Like there's like a way of pushing here. They should like push it out. Use a resource, right? It's like free gold use this entire resource and then make a move uh, when you feel like there's nothing left on the map to farm so he's just gonna push this in farming a lot of the map and then his mo his team is moving towards the bottom area because they want to take the bottom side of the map because top side is like useless now because they already have rush controlling the top side doesn't really do anything but if they take the bottom tower they can get outposts and that entire jungle which is really nice at this point so you only want to like play top when you need Roche or something. But other than that, or if you're like Radiant because you want to control the outpost area of this. But if you're like Dire, then unless there's Roche, you have absolutely no reason of playing top. Or if the only objective that is left is in the top area, which is like this tower or this tower or whatever. So they go here, they end up killing the anti-mage, which is a really nice kill. And now they have an opening where they can go and pressure towers. So they're going mid. They see Odi here, so they instantly, instead of like pushing, they're trying to wrap around on them and then, then kill them. So they fight here, Odi will die because he can't dash all himself. And now two more heroes dead, which is like an opening to get this tower. So now they have bot tower, they have bot control with the outpost, and now they're moving towards the top area. So this is like really nice, like they get another, oh, they're going to kill the anti-mage again. So anti-mage dies again. So at this point, the game is like pretty much over, in my opinion. And we'll probably see the game end in the next few minutes. The main thing here is that you, I want you to understand that they're just like increasing their lead rather than risking throwing trying to take objectives. They're just like farming around the objectives on deeper into the enemy territory, which means that the enemy cannot access these camps, like this camp, this camp, because they're pretty scared that, oh, they have BKBs, they have ages, it's really hard to fight into them, we have to avoid them, uh, which is why they can't really farm much. And if they don't play super disciplined, the enemy is not going to make mistakes. Now they're forcing the enemy to make mistakes like this and then go over that. Okay, so since Murta used BKB here, this is like a bad fight because there's a good chance she will just like die here if she doesn't have BKB. Even if she... So I think they should just like go back at this point. So they're fighting. He goes in. Um, he gets astraled into Ice Path. 
then Meteor Hammer, and then just dies. Yeah, this is gonna happen because, like, if you don't have BKB on Murta, it's like, you will almost always die. So as soon as he respawns, he just, like, goes back mid again because they understand that they have, like, a really big advantage at this point, and uh, throwing it away doesn't, like, farming won't really change anything. They have enough items to, like, end the game. So he just, like, go, goes back in again. Now they're pushing, anti mage dead, a lot of heroes are dead. Or he bought back and instantly typed end. And he's probably gonna feed here. So they're taking buildings. Um, pressuring again and again. Because like they have no response to this. And notice how this game was like so bad early on. But the few thing, few moves that Miracle made. Like killing Broodmother. Not taking the farm of his other cores. Has opened up the game so much that now the enemy doesn't have any way of coming back. So now... I think at this point the game is like probably over. I hope this video was helpful. If you're interested in private coaching, you can join my Discord linked in the description. Other than that, I've also linked my Patreon where you can find excellent investment opportunities in terms of coaching packages. If you like the content, do subscribe as this will encourage me to make more videos like this. Do let me know in the comments if you have any feedback or any suggestions for newer videos. Have a nice day and good luck with your games.